In this section, I'd like to visit with you a little bit about tall fescue, and in particular in the context of uh, providing forage and pasture for horses. Tall fescue is one of the most widely used forage grasses that we have in the U.S. It's very high yielding, very persistent in many, many areas of the, of the country. Now in the southeast, especially where we are at in uh, the lower south, uh, we actually are very much in the lower regions of tall fescue zone of adaptation. So it's very common that we're going to have some problems with persistence, uh, but with proper management, we can keep tall fescue for many, many years. Now tall fescue has in it, and most of the tall fescue anyway, has an endophyte. It's a fungus that grows inside of the plant. And this endophyte, in many cases, produces alkaloids. And these alkaloids are actually compounds similar to um, things like caffeine, nicotine, and others. In this particular case, these alkaloids have some very nasty effects on, on the body's system. Uh, although it helps the plant actually as a defense mechanism, and it also helps with drought persistence, uh, drought tolerance, uh, disease resistance, and so forth. It also can cause some negative side effects to the animals that graze it. So fescue toxicosis is a very real problem, uh, mainly as a result of these alkaloids that are being produced by the uh, fungus that's growing inside of this tall fescue. Now this fungus is actually only propagated by the seed, or via the seed. Uh, it is not propagated by the plant. In other words, one plant can't infect another. So the way that we keep it from spreading is, is by controlling the seed. And that'll come in, uh, in as an important aside when we start talking about replacing that stand. Here's a study that was done several years ago in Clemson, Clemson University. And this is a study where they were comparing the gestation length of some mares who were getting ready to, uh, to fold. And those pastures, those mares that were grazing pastures that were endophyte free, actually had their, mare, they had their foals right at the time that they were supposed to have based on the average gestation length for, for horses. But the gestation length for those that were grazing on endophyte infected tall fescue was on average about 27 days longer. Now this is a very, very big challenge because that, that foal then is much larger. It's going to be much more difficult to foal. Uh, so it makes it much more of a health hazard to the animal as well as to, uh, to the mare as, as well as to the foal. As a consequence, what they noted in their study was that there was a much higher instance of stillborn foals, much higher instance of mares that had difficulty uh, producing milk, agalactic uh, mares. There were also a huge number of cases of retained placentas. In other words, where the placenta itself is not uh, extruded by the, by the animal. And those placentas oftentimes are very stiff and very hard and very difficult for the, the mare to, uh, to do anything with. Now this has some very negative side effects for the history of that animal as it goes forward. From a reproduction standpoint, uh, it can definitely limit the reproduction of that animal. And even in the short term, uh, those animals that are grazing on endophyte infected tall fescue tend to not be uh, as, adic as uh, commonly rebred or as, uh, uh, to rebreed as quickly as those animals grazing on endophyte free tall fescue. So from a best management practice, what we would recommend is removing the, the animals from tall fescue pasture uh, or hay for a period of about 60 to 90 days prior to any anticipated foaling. So those mares that are subjected to, uh, to this type of tall fescue need to actually be removed from that prior to foaling by about 60 to 90 days. Now the alkaloid toxins themselves are very stable in the hay and so we need to be very careful about feeding uh, tall fescue hay to the animals because those uh, toxins are quite stable there. And even a very minimal amount of fescue can actually cause some problems with these mares uh, who are, are getting ready to fold. So it's really, really important uh, 
uh, to keep accurate records about your pastures, but also accurate records about your breeding and anticipating foaling dates so that you know exactly when that mare is getting ready to, uh, to foal and to give us that, that uh, new young one. Now, we talk about tall fescue as being uh, something that's very uh, problematic for reproductive animals, especially mares are in the latter stages of gestation. But it, it can be used quite effectively for animals who are not uh, undergoing, uh, who are not pregnant, who are not undergoing a tremendous amount of work or are expected to gain a lot of weight. Uh, if we're talking about a maintenance animal, then endophyte infected tall fescue is going to have a very, very minimal effect and certainly is not something that is cost, uh, cost effective to try to deal with on, on the short term. Over the long term, however, if you are planning on uh, renovating your pastures, I would definitely recommend looking at a novel endophyte tall fescue to replace that with. Now, a novel endophyte tall fescue has an endophyte in it as well, but it is an endophyte that does not produce the toxic alkaloids. It's a different uh, type, different strain of endophyte. It was actually a collaborative work between the University of Georgia and uh, researchers at the Ag Research uh, Group out of New Zealand who developed and tested this uh, in the U.S. And they tested it on a variety called Jessup and another variety called Georgia 5. Jessup Max Q was the one that ended up being sold most readily. And that's the one that is marketed as Max Q. Now there have been other novel endophyte varieties uh, in development for several years and now we have a few more on the market, uh, including one called Texoma Max Q2 that's looking extremely good in our trials as well. This novel endophyte tall fescue gives the persistence and all the agronomic benefits of having the endophyte in it, but it doesn't have the, tox the toxicosis problems associated with those uh, ergot alkaloids. If you wanted to replace an existing tall fescue stand, especially if it's one that has uh, a tremendously high amount of the endophyte infected tall fescue in it, then there are a couple different strategies that we can put into place for that. One is the technique called the spray smother spray, where you would go out in the spring of the year, in March, and spray a non-selective herbicide on the, on the tall fescue. Then you would plant a summer annual of some sort to smother out the existing crop. You would plant uh, pearl millet, sorghum sudan, or something to that effect. Then you would graze that through the summer season and then once you got ready to plant again in September or early October, you would spray out any remaining weeds or any remaining crop and no-till drill in the tall fescue. And that's an acceptable method of establishing that crop. Here you can see on the left hand side the spray smother spray technique being put into place. And on the right hand side is the control uh, and, and what you can see on the left hand side is that the stand is not quite as thin, as thick. Um, the, uh, the stalks and the residue from the summer annual crop is still present. So there's that to deal with. So it, it's not the ideal situation, but it works fairly effectively. But several years ago, a colleague of mine, a couple colleagues of mine, developed a re alternative replacement strategy where they would conduct what's called the mow spray spray technique. In March and early April to prevent that seed uh, from forming, uh, to, to prevent it from propagating itself by seed, they would go out and they would mow off the, the area with a bush hog or a rotary mower of some sort to clip off those seed heads and uh, make sure that it never goes to seed. Then you could graze the crop through the summer months and, and then about six to eight weeks prior to planting you would go out and spray that crop with a non-selective herbicide. Uh, and this is where it's critical to do this ahead of time. Uh, then you would wait uh, to about a week or so before planting, and then you could spray that crop one more time to kill any escapes that weren't killed the first time. That two-spray method actually does an extremely good job of killing out the existing stand, as well as any other weed problems that we may have. And then after you've made that second application, uh, 
you can go in about a week later and plant in the tall fescue. Now by doing that, there's an example of the plot work that was done there. Um, and, and this on the far left hand side is the six week interval. And you can see there's a very good stand there, very little weed pressure, unlike in the two to four week uh, interval, there's actually quite a bit of, of weed pressure. In that instance, they actually went back and measured uh, this, not only in the plot areas, but also in the farms that they uh, uh, tried this out at. And they found that on average, they saw much less than 2.5% uh, toxic endophyte infected uh, infection levels there in those, those pastures. So that's a very, very effective uh, tool for getting rid of the existing uh, infected tall fescue with a relatively inexpensive uh, strategy. Well, I hope that uh, helps explain some of the issues regarding uh, fescue toxicosis and replacing that with a novel endophyte tall fescue. And in particular for our horse owners and for horse managers, uh, they have an opportunity there to prevent some of these problems with fes fescue toxicosis.